Alright guys, I'm back with my review of WWE Night of Champions 2012 and I actually thought this was a pretty good pay-per-view. had some really good matches on here um, so I thought it was pretty solid. This one did deliver in my opinion. It's in Boston and we get the pre-show Battle Royal to see who's going to wrestle Antonio Cesaro later in the night for the US title. And some of the guys on this Battle Royal were Brodus Clay, Tensai, Primo Epico, Jinder Mahal, Zack Ryder, Drew McIntyre, uh, Ted DiBiase, and um, Santino. But Heath Slater does his little one-man band dance at the beginning. And this causes everyone to just attack him and eliminate him first. And I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, Matt Stryker, he goes off and says, I can't remember who he said would play Antonio. But he says that in the movie of Antonio's life, Oksana would be played by Megan Fox, and all we need to know now is who would play Antonio's challenger later tonight. And I'm just thinking, where does he come up with these lines? It's crazy stuff. But he did say that, and he probably worked all week on that. <laughs> but anyways, Tensai actually sells the Cobra, and I thought that was just disgusting to have this gigantic guy who's beat Cena. Um, he's beat a few other guys, I can't remember exactly, but um, he has been pushed as a really strong monster guy, and here he is selling for the Cobra. And I didn't care for that at all. Um, Tensai goes to powerbomb Ryder out of the ring. Ryder uses his legs to flip Tensai out. He holds on, so Ryder wins the match. He goes on to face Antonio later for the US title. Uh, Michael Cole gives us an update on Jerry Lawler, how he's doing much better, but of course he can't be at the pay-per-view, so they need a replacement, and it's JBL. And this was a great surprise. Um, JBL did an amazing job this entire night. He really helped this show out a lot, in my opinion. So, the first match on the actual pay-per-view is the Fatal 4-Way for the Intercontinental title. We got Miz, Cody Rhodes, Rey Mysterio, Sin Cara... Miz says he's going to file a complaint against Booker T. Um, there was some bad communication in this match. I still enjoyed the match. I thought it was decent. Um, but something was off here. And I think a lot of it had to do with Sin Cara. Uh, because his spots were the ones that seemed to kind of drag a little bit. And like I said, it was still an enjoyable match. But something was definitely off here, communication-wise. Um... Sin Cara tries to put a mask on Cody, but Miz breaks it up. Miz gets Sin Cara up, and Sin Cara puts the mask on Miz. Cody goes to give crossroads to Sin Cara. Uh, Miz attacks him, hits the skull-crushing finale on Cody, pins him, gets the win. All while, we're, <laughs> while wearing this mask on his face, which was kind of funny too. And that was it. I mean, Miz keeps the Intercontinental title. That was awesome. Um... But, yeah, overall, the match could have been a lot better. I don't really know what happened here. But Miz retains. Backstage, we see the primetime players are complaining to Eve. She is called away because Caitlyn has been injured. Uh, she's been attacked from behind. She doesn't know who attacked her. It was Eve. We all know it was Eve. I mean, this is so predictable. Eve did this so that she could get the title shot herself. I mean, it was so obvious. I really didn't think they were going to do this, but once I saw Caitlyn was hurt, I was like, oh god, it's Eve. Um, so we get Daniel Bryan and Kane versus Kofi Kingston and Truth for the tag titles. Kane and Daniel Bryan start pushing each other, but they decide to hug it out. Oh man, fans were going crazy for Bryan here though. He got a huge pop when he um, got Kofi in the no lock, and then when Truth broke it up, he actually got booed. But... Brian pushes Kane off the top rope. He falls on Kofi. Ref counts three new tag team champions. Uh, afterwards, they start saying, I am the tag team champions. And they go back and forth saying this over and over. Uh, Kane does his thing where they're staring at each other and they're he's pissed off, so Kane goes to do his little pyro thing. And it was delayed. <laughs> he did the thing and then the pyro went off instead of, you know, instantly. So that was kind of funny, too. I mean, I don't know. That's That's got to suck for Kane. 
Backstage, Eve tells Booker Caitlin twisted her ankle. Booker forgets it was Night of Champions. Eve says something like, Caitlin's worked hard, and Booker says, I'm going to handle this. I'll make sure Caitlin gets her shot. And Eve says, well, we got to have a, a challenger for Layla. It's Night of Champions. Every belt has to be defended. And Booker's like, oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> he forgot it was Night of Champions. But, of course, he puts Eve in the match. That was her plan all along. We get Antonio versus Zack Ryder for the U.S. title. This was actually a good match. I like this one. Oksana gives Antonio, or saves Antonio from the broski boot. He hits the neutralizer for the win. Um, still U.S. champion. But I was surprised at how much time they gave this match and how good it was. This was one of the better matches on the show, in my opinion. Uh, we see Otunga and Del Rio talking backstage. Ricardo comes up. He's not wearing his neck brace anymore. Otunga uh, says that he needs to put the brace back on. And, of course, they're trying to sell the bro kick being dangerous and everything. Uh, Otunga calls him a stupido. Dolph Ziggler versus Randy Orton. I didn't really care for this. I thought it was a decent match and everything, but I just had a hard time getting into this one. And, of course, Randy Orton had to win here. He wins with the RKO. That was it. There's really nowhere for this feud to go now. There was no point having Ziggler lose like this. Just clean RKO in the middle. And it was a good match and everything, but especially if Randy Orton's going off to shoot a movie, I mean, they really do not care about pushing Dolph Ziggler. They will give, they'll toss him something every once in a while, but they really don't care. If they were serious about pushing this guy, this would not have happened here. So, yeah, WWE does not have some type of huge plan um, waiting for Dolph Ziggler here. Michael Cole says he cannot wait to watch Dread 3D. Somehow I doubt that. Layla versus Eve for the Divas title. Eve wins with a neck breaker, new Divas champion. Good match and really good commentary from JBL and Michael Cole. Daniel Bryan and Kane are walking around backstage yelling, I'm the tag team champions. AJ freaks out. Dr. Shelby has them congratulate each other. Kane dumps Gatorade on all three of them. And then he says he's going to Disneyland. JBL says, close Disneyland. <laughs> that was a great line. He had some really good stuff all night. So on to the semi-main event, Sheamus versus Del Rio for the World Heavyweight title. Booker T comes out. He's finished his investigation on the bro kick. He says if you're going to be a WWE superstar, you have to know that there's going to be risk involved. He reinstates the bro kick. That whole thing didn't last very long, but bro kick is back. Otunga gets on the ropes, and Sheamus bro kicks him. Or on the apron, excuse me. And Sheamus Bro kicks him off. Match was uh, pretty good, I thought. Del Rio works over the arm the whole time. I, I'm i just tired of seeing that. I feel like every single Del Rio match is the exact same. I mean, it's always working over the arm. He hits that move where he grabs the arm and drops it on his knees. He'll kick the arm. He'll pull it over the rope. And then he'll put you in the arm bar. I feel like I've seen it a ton of times, and this was no different. It was a typical Del Rio match. Not to say the match wasn't good. I thought it was a really good match, but it's like, come on. we got to change some things up here. So Del Rio works over the arm the whole time. Sheamus powers out of the arm bar. He goes for the bro kick, gets caught into another arm bar. He gets the ropes, and then he hits the bro kick for the win. Um, that was all of it, pretty much. Paul Heyman comes out, says that he is sitting ringside to watch Punk continue his reign. We get Punk versus Cena. And this was a really good match. I really enjoyed this a lot. Cena is still getting booed here. That cannot feel good to get booed in your hometown. I mean, it was just... <laughs> I couldn't believe how much they were booing him here. Punk's wearing the Yankees colors on his tights, which I thought was a nice touch. Cena gets out of the Anaconda Vice and puts Punk in the STF. So Punk turns into a crossface, and they go for the trade punches spot. And Punk is getting cheered while Cena gets booed. You know when they're throwing punches and the fans are like, yeah, boo, yeah. Well, Cena was getting the boos here. And once again, hometown guy. So Cena counters the GTS with the STF, but Punk gets the ropes. Cena kicks out of the GTS. 
Punk kicks out of the AA. Punk goes for a moonsault and almost kills Cena. I liked how they built this up. Like, Punk's done everything. He can't beat Cena. He's tried all his moves. Um, he did the kick to the head, the GTS, the Anaconda Vice. So he's going to try something crazy. He's going to go for a moonsault. And Cena rolled out of the way, but Punk was all the way over here. So his legs almost landed on Cena's face. Like, that would have really messed him up. His full weight of his knees landing on Cena's head. So that was a very close call here. Um, Cena kicks out of another GTS, and he also kicks out of a rock bottom that Punk gave him. Punk kicks out of another AA, and then eventually Cena wins with a German suplex. Off the middle rope, I believe. So I'm thinking Cena won the match, he's running around, and then of course there's got to be some type of you know swerve here. The shoulders of both men were on the mat. So the ref gives Punk the belt back and says this match is a draw. And I'm thinking, okay, you know, typical WWE stuff, they're going to restart the match. No, Punk lays him out with the title and leaves. <laughs> that was it. So the match ended in a draw, and Punk leaves champion. Now, I think this is a good idea because Punk's whole thing is demanding respect. And on Monday Night Raw, he's probably going to say, I beat Cena, or I kept the belt, even though it was from a draw. And he's still going to demand respect for this, which is a great way to get heat because really it was a draw match. He didn't beat Cena, so this is great for Hill Punk. Um, I kind of thought they would do something like have Bork Laser and Big Show run down to the ring or one of those guys, help Punk keep the belt, and then build to the Hell in a Cell stipulation because Punk's you know friends can't help him win this match. It's going to be in the cell. So I thought they would do that and then build to the Hell in a Cell match, but they didn't. They just had Punk lay him out with the title and leave. So I'm interested to see how they're going to build up to Hell in a Cell here. But overall, this was a good show. It looks like Sheamus versus Del Rio is over finally. There was no crazy finish. Um, Sheamus just won the match. So I think that feud is finally over. Um, new tag team champions. Not too crazy about the comedy gimmick. I hope it's short-lived, but we'll see where they go with this too. It's going to be good for the tag division for a little bit, but I think it's going to end up hurting Daniel Bryan in the long run if they don't change it. Uh, new Divas champion is interesting because... That division's been nothing for a while now. Um, and yeah, Punk retains the title. Um, I can't say I'm really surprised. I like the way they did it because having Cena win was a surprise, but of course saying it was a draw. Um, but yeah, overall a really good show here. I thought this was a solid pay-per-view, and I did enjoy this one. So that's my review of WWE Night of Champions. Hope you guys like this video. Leave your thoughts on this show in the comments below, and thanks for watching.